Today, I'll be going over the biomechanics of a golf swing. I will be touching on mobility, stability, the kinematic sequence, center of gravity, the base of support, muscles, posture, mechanics of the swing itself, the common injuries that are associated with it, the joint axis, and also what kind of lever it is. But before that, let's take a look at an individual who has never played golf before. Notice his kinematic sequence, how he is out of sorts. His base of support is nice and stable, good center of gravity, but he has poor posture, bad mechanics, and he's not using the correct muscles to properly position himself and how to move around the joint axis in order to hit the ball properly. His follow through is poor, bad posture, bad form. So now let's take a look at a professional who has been doing it for quite some time now. Here is a proper kinematic sequence of a golf swing. All great ball strikers begin by generating speed from their lower body and transferring that speed through their torso into their arms and then into the club in order to hit the ball effectively. A golf swing uses both combination of upper cross and lower cross muscles as you can see here from the picture listing. Having a C posture can be detrimental to your golf swing. A C posture can be caused by having tight or shortened muscles, which includes the pet major and minor, the lats, and your upper traps and levator scapula, which can lead to a severe loss of spinal rotation, which in turn limits the ability to create a good backswing turn. Loss of posture can affect all aspects of the golf swing, namely timing, balance, and rhythm. The ability to stabilize the spine angle during the swing is proportional to the strength and stability of your thorax and glutes. Swing tempo and rhythm can affect the ability to maintain the body angles. In a flat shoulder plane, Players must have a good range of motion in the shoulders and lats. If the range of motion is poor, then they can lose their postures and their shoulders will turn. This can be due to a lack of mobility in the T-spine or poor technique. In the extension phase, the ability to separate the upper body from the lower body allows the golfer to maintain stable posture and proper sequence of motion during the swing. Limited thorax to pelvis separation is usually caused by reducing spinal mobility and shortening lat flexibility. Next, in the over the top phase, it is essential to develop a proper kinematic sequence of motion during transition and downswing. Without the ability to initiate the downswing with the lower body, a player can dominate the downswing with an upper body throw right from the top, forcing the over the top swing plane. A sway is any excessive lower body lateral movement away from the target during the backswing that forces the weight to the outside of the back foot, meaning the base of support has to be in contact with the ground at all times and just shifting the center of gravity in order to manipulate the torque that is needed to hit the ball. A lack in understanding of the swaying motion can lead to injury in the hip, knee, or ankle. Stabilizing your body through the downswing is key to transferring the energy from the club to the ball on impact. 
If the body is unable to rotate around the lead hip due to joint or muscular restrictions, then lateral movements will dominate the pattern. Many golfers have poor fitted shoes that do not give them the support they need to stabilize the lead leg. A reverse spine angle is any excessive upper body backward bend or excessive left lateral for right handed golfers upper body bend during the backswing. The upper body tends to dominate the swing when the lower body can't start the downswing or has a limited ability to initiate the movement. This swing is one of the prime causes of low back pain. And lastly, casting or early release refers to any premature release of the wrist angles during the downswing and through the impact, like the casting of a fishing rod. With that being said, this is considered a third class lever. The angle loss results in a weakened impact position with the lead wrist being coupled at ball strike. The angle loss adds loft to the force of the club and as a result we see the loss of power and consistency. Any dysfunction in the lower body can be the root cause if the lower body is not initiating the sequence of power. The upper body will try to compensate to make the missing to try to make up for the missing lower body. The lower body dysfunctions include poor hip mobility, poor ankle mobility, and poor core pelvic and lumbar spine stability, which can also lead to injuries. Okay, this is the kinematic sequence of a golf swing. So imagine when you swing a golf club that you're cracking a whip and you're trying to move one segment at a time. So it all starts with the club. The club moves first by bringing the wrist back and then the arms move and then the thoracic spine moves and then very last the hips start to turn. And the reverse order is how you get the club back down to the ball. So you're starting to turn the hips, the thoracic spine, the shoulders, and then the wrists and club come through last to make contact with the ball.